Greetings everyone, Mike here with Sci-Fi and more, and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome to our Sci-Fi family. There's an old saying out there that says, science fiction writes the future. And I had found an interesting article about 11 ideas that came from science fiction, which have been integrated into reality. Now, this is not new news, but it is fascinating to think about. The article that this video was based on was written by Lee Cavendish for the March 25th, 2020 edition of All About Space magazine. And I've gone ahead and I've posted a link to the article in the description below. Science fiction has always been a medium for futuristic imaginations. And while different alien species and intergalactic travel are yet to be discovered, there is an array of technologies that are no longer figments of the imagination, thanks to the world of science fiction. Some of the creative inventions that have appeared in some movie favorites like Back to the Future and Total Recall are now at the forefront of modern technology. Here are a few of the innovative technologies that went from science fiction to reality. And with that, let's start what seems to be the most obvious innovative idea. The communicator from Star Trek the original series. It's something that almost everyone has in their pockets. Cell phones have become a necessity in modern life with a plethora of remarkable features. The first mobile phone was invented in 1973, the Motorola Dynatac. It was a bulky thing that weighed about 2.4 pounds and it only had about 35 minutes of talk time not to mention cost thousands of dollars to own. The Motorola Dynatac was invented by Martin Cooper who led a team that created the phone in just 90 days. A long-standing rumor was that Cooper got his inspiration from episodes of Star Trek watching Captain Kirk use his handheld communication device. However, Cooper stated in a 2015 interview that the original inspiration was from the comic strip Dick Tracy, in which the character used a, a wristwatch two-way radio. Another innovation that came from Star Trek the original series was the Universal Translator. While exploring space, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock would come across alien life who spoke different languages. To understand these alien languages, Kirk and Spock used a device that immediately translated the alien's language. Star Trek's Universal Translator was first seen on screen when Spock tried to communicate with a non-biological entity. Although the idea in Star Trek was to communicate with intelligent alien life, a device capable of breaking down language barriers would revolutionize real-time communication. Now, with products that started off this real-time trend like SourceNext, PocketTalk, and Skype's new voice translator service, which today in 2024 has evolved into the Raviad language translator device and neural machine translation models or NMTs, which are capable of providing instantaneous translation between languages. Flawless real-time communication is still far off, but the technology advancements over the last decade mean this feat is within reach. And yet another innovative idea from Star Trek the original series was the transporter. The idea behind beaming someone up was that a person could be broken down into an energy form or dematerialized and then converted back into matter at their destination or rematerialization. Transporting people this way on Star Trek USS Enterprise has been around since the very beginning of the series, debuting in the pilot episode. Scientists haven't figured out how to teleport humans yet, 
but they can teleport balls of energy known as photons. In this case, teleportation is based on a phenomenon known as quantum entanglement. This refers to a condition in quantum mechanics where two entangled particles may be very far from one another, yet remain connected, so that actions performed on one affect the other, regardless of distance. The information exchange between the two photons occurs at least 10,000 times faster than the speed of light. And not to be left out, the original Star Wars movie had an innovative idea of its own for the time, holographic messages. Not long into the first Star Wars movie, Obi-Wan Kenobi receives a holographic message. By definition, a hologram is a three-dimensional image created from the interference of light beams from a laser onto a two-dimensional surface, and can only be seen from one angle. In 2018, researchers from Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, created a real hologram. Their technique, called volumetric display, works like an etch-a-sketch toy but uses particles at high speed. With lasers, researchers can trap particles and move them into a designated shape, while another set of lasers emit red, green, and blue light onto the particle and create the image. But so far, this can only be done on an extremely small scale. And what about the Empire Strikes Back? They gave us an innovative idea, too. However, to be fair, this innovative idea we had seen years before on television. Imagine losing both your legs, one arm, and an eye as a result of a NASA test flight gone wrong, forcing you to crash into the desert, only to wake up better, stronger, faster. This is exactly what happened to Steve Austin in The Six Million Dollar Man who received bionic implants, or more to the point, replacements after a malfunction on his test flight forced him to impact the ground. I can see the replacement of the limbs, uh, but I can't see the better, stronger, faster part. I would think that would cause enormous strain on the remaining organic parts of the body. Or, how about getting your hand chopped off by your father? After losing his hand in a lightsaber fight with his father, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker receives a bionic version that has all the functions of his normal hand. Now, this scenario seems much more likely. Researchers from the Georgia Institute of Technology have been developing a way for amputees to control each of their prosthetic fingers using an ultrasonic sensor. In the movie, Skywalker's prosthetic hand uses electromyogram sensors attached to his muscles. These sensors can be switched into different modes and are controlled by the flexing and contraction of his muscles. The prosthesis created by the Georgia Tech researchers, however, uses machine learning and ultrasound signals to detect fine finger-by-finger -finger movement. And what about Blade Runner's digital billboard? Director Ridley Scott presents a landscape shot of futuristic Los Angeles in the movie Blade Runner. While scanning the skyscrapers, a huge digital, almost cinematic billboard appears on one of the buildings. This pre-internet concept sparked the imagination of Andrew Phipps Newman the CEO of Doe.com. Doe, which stands for Digital Out of Home, is a company dedicated to providing live, dynamic advertisements through the use of digital billboards. The company is now at the forefront of advertising as it offers a more enticing form, one that will make people stop and stare. Digital billboards have come a long way since Don't was founded in 2013. They have taken advantage of crowded cities such as London or New York 
to utilize this unique advertising tactic. Perhaps the more recent Blade Runner 2049 will bring us even more newer technologies. But Blade Runner didn't stop there. What about the idea of AI or artificial intelligence? The Blade Runner story heavily revolves around the idea of synthetic humans, which require artificial intelligence. Some people might be worried about the potential fallout of giving computers intelligence, which has had disastrous consequences in many of the science fiction work. But AI has some very useful applications in reality. For instance, astronomers have trained machines to find exoplanets using computer-based learning techniques. While sifting through the copious amounts of data collected by missions such as NASA's Kepler and TESS missions, AI can identify the telltale signs of an exoplanet lurking in the data. And what about the space station concept we saw in 2001 A Space Odyssey? Orbiting Earth in 2001 A Space Odyssey is Space Station 5, a large establishment located in a low Earth orbit where astronauts can bounce around in microgravity. Does this sound familiar? The Space Station 5 provided inspiration for the International Space Station, which has been orbiting the Earth since 1998 and currently accommodates up to six astronauts at a time. Although Space Station 5 appears much more luxurious, the International Space Station has accomplished much more in science. The International Space Station has been fundamental to microgravity research since the start of its construction in 1998. Space Station 5 wasn't just an out-of-this-world holiday experience. It was also employed as a pit stop before traveling to the moon and other long-duration space destinations. The proposed Deep Space Gateway would be the station orbiting the moon that would serve a similar purpose. Additionally, 2001 A Space Odyssey introduced us to what we call tablets today. Tablets are a wonderful handheld computer that can be controlled with the press of a finger. These handy devices are used by people across the globe and even upwards on the International Space Station. Apple claims to have invented the tablet with the release of its iPad. However, Samsung made an interesting argument in court that Apple was wrong. Stanley Kubrick and Sir Arthur C. Clarke invented the tablet by including this device in 2001 A Space Odyssey. In the film, Dr. David Bowman and Dr. Frank Poole watch news updates from their flat screen computers, which they call newspads. Samsung claimed that these newspads were the original tablet featured in the film over 40 years before the first iPad arrived in 2010. This argument was not successful, though, as the judge ruled that Samsung could not utilize this particular piece of evidence. And how about Back to the Future Part 2? What did that movie provide for us? The Back to the Future trilogy is a highly enjoyable trio of time-traveling adventures, but it is Part 2 that presents the creator's vision of 2015. The film predicted a far more outlandish 2015 than what actually happened just nine years ago, but it got one thing correct hoverboards, just like the one Marty McFly borrows to make a quick escape. Although they aren't as widespread as they are in the film, hoverboards do exist. The first real one was created in 2015 by Arx Pax, a company based in California. The company invented the magnetic field architecture used to provide the levitation of the hoverboard. 
The Borg generates a magnetic field, which in turn creates an eddy current, which then creates another opposing magnetic field. These magnetic fields repel each other against a copper hover pack that provides the lift. And finally, what about Total Recall, introducing us to the driverless cars? In the 1990 film, set in 2084, Total Recall's protagonist, Douglas Quaid, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, finds himself in the middle of a sci-fi showdown on Mars. In one scene, Quaid is on the run and jumps into the driverless car. In the front is Johnny Cab, which is the car's onboard computer system. All Johnny needs is an address to get you to your intended destination. Although the driverless car wasn't seen in action before Arnie yells profanities and takes over the driving, the idea of having a car that takes you to your destination using its onboard computer is become increasingly popular over time. Perhaps the most well-known company is Tesla. Tesla has made a name for itself with their various self-driving automobiles, with cars like the Model S and the Model Y being some of their more prominent Tesla vehicles. But the company that is on the forefront of driverless cars is Waymo as they want to eradicate the human error and inattention that results in dangerous and fatal car accidents. In 2017, NASA stated it intends to help in the production of driverless cars as they would improve the technologies of robotic vehicles on extraterrestrial surfaces like the Moon or Mars. And there you have it, Cosmic Core. Thank you so much for checking out our video. And I hope you have enjoyed the video from sci-fi to reality. And if you did, please be sure to like and share the video. And if you feel we earned it, please feel free to subscribe and join our sci-fi family. It's one click for you, but it means the world to us. But, you know, there are tons of devices out there that I'm sure we did not even come close to covering. We're just scratching the surface with this one. If there are any other sci-fi to reality devices you think are worthy of mention, please be sure to drop them in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys are thinking. That's all for now, Cosmic Core. Until next time, have a great galactic day.